The Ableton 11.1 update has now been officially released, but the question is, is it worth downloading? The biggest change with 11.1 is the native Apple Silicon support, which it only took them 15 months since the Apple M1 computers were released to update and add native Apple support to Ableton Live. There are some small improvements as well. Let's check them out. First is the updated shifter device, which adds a new mode for real-time monophonic pitch shifting delay, an envelope section, and an LFO and glide functionality. There's two new Max for Live utilities, Align Delay and Shaper MIDI. They improved arrow key navigation and arrangement view, so it's a lot easier to navigate now. A new device icon has been added to the browser. So if you go into Places and then Add Folder and then just select wherever you like to store your project files. Here you can open up your projects and transfer over instruments from your previous projects to your current projects. And now you can transfer over complete devices. So you can just bring in the exact same thing that from a track you're working on into your current one. It's pretty cool. They made some changes to clip view. All clip properties are now displayed in panels or tabs instead of separate panels, which is nice because it just shows you everything right there. It's all displayed right in front of you. Alt or option on Mac one, two, and three switch between the modes and clip view can be toggled to its maximum height using the keyboard shortcut control alt E or command option E for Mac. For audio clips, the pitch dial is now smaller and the gain slider has been enlarged. And when multiple audio clips are selected, the sample properties, sample rate, bit depth, and channel count for all the samples will be displayed in the clip view. If a value is not the same for all the samples, there'll be a little star character that will be displayed. And you also see the total number of samples selected. Comping. You can now duplicate selected take lanes with command or control D. CPU meter customization. You can now select if you want to see the average CPU or the current CPU usage, or you can turn off the CPU monitor completely. They updated the bundled max build to version 8.2.1. In wavetable, the high quality mode is now turned off by default, which can save up to 25% of your CPU usage. But you can turn it back on by right clicking on the top right here, and this opens up the context menu and you just select high quality. Some other random things are the quantize settings button in the MIDI editor now says apply and close instead of OK and cancel. So I guess it's a little more clear what you're doing because OK and cancel are kind of like the same thing, I guess. On Mac, the mouse cursor will now display an arrow pointing in a single direction when hovering over split views, which can be resized in one direction only. Added a new MIDI envelope auto reset entry to the options menu. And to avoid incompatibilities, if you open up a set from an older version of Ableton, you'll be asked to save it as a new set. An able, uh, 11.1 set. So if you want to download this update, you actually have to download it on Ableton's website and not in Ableton Live itself. So really you're downloading an entirely new version of Ableton and you just do Mac OS Universal and click download, open the DMG, and you'll just drag this over to applications. It's gonna say that it already exists, so you're gonna just click replace. One big reason not to download this update yet is there is a lot of incompatibility with plugins. Any plugin that doesn't have Apple native silicon support will not run on this version. But there are two ways to get around this. One is if you open up the plugin using audio units, A or AU, it'll run the plugin using Rosetta. Although I noticed that some plugins don't open correctly using audio units, like the GUI doesn't load, or it just mutes the entire track when the plugin's there. But most plugins seem to run correctly. The other option is to actually open live using Rosetta. So if you have a project that has a bunch of VSTs that are incompatible, but you wanna work on it with this new version, just right click on the application, go to get info, and then check open using Rosetta. This will basically make the software function like the previous version of Ableton 11.0. And because of this, there's not really any consequences of downloading this update if you're an M1 Mac user. You can also download this universal build if you have an Intel Mac and it will run. You just have to have Mojave or newer. There's also a bunch more little improvements and changes and a whole bunch of bug fixes. And honestly, the bug fixes alone is a good enough reason to download this update. So that's the 11.1 update. I downloaded it and I like it so far. Cheers to your music making in Ableton Live and create every day. <laughs>